Well, good morning and welcome to another She Myth Eliminator story. I'm Tracy Wilson, obviously co-author uh, of the best-selling book, The She Myth. And if you're watching right now, you're probably either on my personal Facebook page or you are watching inside of the She Myth book launch group. So I want to welcome you guys to uh, this morning's She Myth Eliminator story. Today, I have got an amazing guest with me. Her name is Amber Mercer. Some of you may have seen her on another show that I run called Unlocked with Tracy Wilson. But today, I really wanted Amber to come on here and to start talking. Give us like her insight. Of, I've, I've come to know Amber over the last couple of years and know the amazing things that she's done as an entrepreneur, as a wife, as a, um, as a sister, and all the things that she does to care for other people. The things that I've seen Amber doing, she very much is in that caretaker role. She will do anything possible to help somebody else live a better life. And with her uh, new business, the founder, she's a founder of the Holistic Growth Strategies, where she actually helps business owners, in particular, lots and lots of women, really help to understand all the financial aspects of their business so that they can run a, run it very, very successfully. So I actually handpicked and asked Amber to come on to come on to this uh, segment and to tell her story because I think her story is one of courage. It is it is an interesting story and it's one where I think she's going to inspire other people to really get out there and start living your best life and just shedding away those she myths that we have all often been very good at layering on top of on top of ourselves. So. Welcome to the She Myth Eliminator story segment for our for the She Myth book launch, Amber. Well, thank you so much for thinking of me and inviting me. I think it's fabulous. I uh, congratulations first of all on a successful launch for the She Myth. I was so excited when you first told me about it, and I was counting the days till you actually launched it. And you and Vicky, <laughs> like beautiful everything the it's been so exciting and amazing to be a part of this launch so congratulations again thank you so much for for just being here and for uh for you know being somebody who's been an extreme supporter of us and buying the book and really sharing that out with um as many people as you possibly can thank you for doing that so let's start with like a little bit about who amber mercer is where like where did you grow up where where were you where did where has life taken you my goodness, I I do think of myself as a child of the world. You know, when somebody says, where's home? Home is a lot of places. I grew up, my mom's family is in the UK. I grew up in the Indo-Pak subcontinent. I have spent my time over the last few years dividing it between Canada and the States. And um, it's been so much fun exploring this beautiful world of ours. Um, but it's, it was interesting when I was thinking about the premise of the she myth, it's growing up in different cultures, growing up in different parts of the world. And also as an immigrant, you know, to different parts of the world, it was, um, I've had a very interesting um, experience of this, right? And uh, perhaps I would even venture to say perhaps a little bit broader experience of it. and. It's it's been a great learning experience. I'm just gonna unmute me. I've got I've just had somebody arrive, so I'm just making sure that I don't have any background noise there. So <laughs> um, it's I've got a bit of background noise happening in uh, in my uh, in my home at the moment. So you know, being that child of the world and traveling around uh, different places, I mean, I'm interested to hear. Like when the, the she myths that maybe you've seen as you've moved around, like were there differences in the types of she myths or that you had experienced in all the different countries and all the different um, traditional back, you know, the different cultures and backgrounds that you that you had experienced as a child? Did you see that, and how has that impacted you as an adult? You know, um, it's. I would say definitely the culture, um, the environment plays a huge role in it, right? And it's funny, as different as we are at the base, it, the patterns and the similarities kind of pop up, right? Um, and it's interesting to me that, you know, you I always think that, oh, wow, we have progressed so much as human beings. And yet there are some things that kind of still stick to the old standards, right? And um, 
but my experience I think was different primarily because of the external environment being what it was, the internal environment of our home, you know, being what it was, I think that created a unique perspective on how I looked at things, right? Um, so I was very, I'm very lucky. I grew up with parents um, who encouraged, you know, whatever I wanted to explore. I still remember I, to this day, I really, truly believe that I can do anything. Like there is nothing I cannot do. And somebody would say, oh, well, you can't be a rocket scientist. I truly believe I can. Like that's how much it played into my head that there was nothing that could stop me. And that was very much because of how my internal environment inside the house was, right? Because um, Asian cultures are amazing in different things, but there's also a higher propensity to protect women, right? To have a sheltered um, environment and what you can and cannot do. And even when you venture out of the home, what are some of the things that you might experience, right? Um, so perhaps that external environment would have played a bigger role in how I saw what was available to me. But I don't think it did. And part of it possibly is my giant rose colored glasses because I truly see things and people as how they can be as opposed to how they are. Brings up that whole concept of nature or nurture, right? So the the fact that you, you know, innately you're a very positive, outgoing, you know, like to see um, the the best sides in people and in life. That's one part of it. But also that nurturing piece, like you're talking about having a home that was very much about you can do anything, and the fact that your um, your parents obviously, you know, were quite. Uh, outgoing and um, and obviously a little risk taking because they were happy to to move from place to place knowing that everything would be okay. So the fact that you were able to grow up in that environment where you were able to move, you know, making friends becomes a little easier. And I can kind of talk from this um, perspective too because I resonate with that because not because I moved around a lot as a child, but in my career I moved my children around a lot. Um, and there's obviously pros and cons yeah. for both of that, but it has has meant that they've been able to grow up in a um, in a with no problem in making you know making friends, and they have them everywhere. So I would imagine that you being you know an outgoing person that you are, that you would be very similar. Can you think of a time where um, you know when you think about some of the things that hold women back? Has there been a time in your life where you've thought? You know, something has happened to you where you've been held back. However, because of your your um, tenacity and your ability to be able to just go, I just brush that off and move on. How did you overcome that? Oh gosh. Um, so huh, I, you already know, I'm such a geek. I'm such a big nerd, right? So in that I was always interested in exploring things and fields and areas of study that um, interested me. And I don't believe I ever picked anything that, oh, this is more, you know, suitable for females or males. It was just whatever interested me. And interestingly enough, um, those, a lot of those fields ended up being fields where for some reason, there were fewer females. And I wasn't picking them because I was trying to make inroads into them, but I was picking them primarily because I, I genuinely wanted to learn uh, more about them. Um, and when I went to, um, I switched out of medicine and I went into finance and it was interesting because when I looked around and I picked my major and I could have picked accounting and there was marketing, there was information system, like there was a whole b bunch of choices. And finance really intrigued me because it was almost like, you know, putting on a detective hat. I was being the Sherlock Holmes person and going into companies and figuring out what was, you know, what was not working, what was wrong, where it was wrong, right? And so my minor was marketing and there was a whole bunch of um, of women in marketing. There were quite a few in accounting, and but in finance, I looked around and there were three, 
including me. And I was like, oh, there's not very many girls, but it didn't quite sink in until we went along and one of the girls dropped out and now there was only two. And I started to discover bit by bit that this is a field that for some reason, women are not picking. And even when they are picking, perhaps they are feeling like they don't quite fit in, right? And that really hit home when I was in the dean's office for gosh, I don't even remember why I went there. It was to to take care of something. And by the end of that conversation, when we had wrapped it up, um, she said to me, would you be interested in working at like the top brokerage firm in, in actually they're internationally um, there. So, and to a first year commerce kid, it was like, I've just gone to heaven. But as I went to the firm, I realized it was, practically all guys um and in fact there was one woman on the partner's floor where you know all the partners were there was one and i do believe she was there because she was the cream of the crop she could wipe the floor with anybody and she had made her way there still didn't get it until i remember finding out there was uh, one woman who was an assistant to the broker and to one of the brokers and she was um, she was <laughs> she was really down one day and i found out that it's because when really affluent clients would call in they wouldn't take quotes from her and really for quotes it was literally she had she was reading a screen like you know this is what's happening this is the bid this is the ask this is what's going on and they wouldn't take quotes from her and i was thinking how does that even like factor in but there was this thing that as a woman you're not smart enough you're not bright enough you're not qualified to even give me a quote and luckily it was there, but it didn't enter my internal environment because the broker that I was directly working for and I was doing a bunch of research for him, he was the best boss I could have ever gotten. All the guys on the floor were amazing. They were so encouraging. Everybody, you know, adopted me and it was, it was an incredible experience. But at the back of my mind, there was still that thought that isn't that weird? Why wouldn't they take quotes from a woman? right so oh, but yeah. you know there's all kinds of stories i you know you have come across i've come across but that still to this day is something that i was thinking wow you know you hear about this old boys network but it's so alive even now <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it is and it is that that you know a woman feeling inadequate because even though she was absolutely qualified and probably the best person on that floor to give those clients that advice but because she was a woman her advice being uh diluted because of the fact that she was a woman and people not wanting to take her advice uh that is a, a huge she myth that we need to you know we need to eradicate so that the advice because what we need to get to to a point where the advice that we as women give is just as good as our male counterparts and just because we're a woman and we have a female voice that that voice is not being diluted because of that fact so um thank you for sharing that story because that's a that is a huge she myth and i'm so pleased that for you that as you were moving through that firm obviously there were a lot of really great men in that firm too that really did you know uh, embrace women and help them to um you know to to rise along with their male with 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 them the, your male counterparts that is fantastic and it's a testament to that particular organization but it's just it is a shame that those sorts of things are still happening and they you know they've happened in the past and they still happen today so this so as far as like the shemith book is concerned i know you've literally just got your book it's like we've just arrived and you've <laughs> just had an opportunity to start reading it but tell me amber why was it that you were so um that you were interested in reading the book and why have you been so excited about it so let me clarify one thing about with the story that i shared 
The story that I shared about the guys not taking quotes, that was not from the partner. That I think just about anybody anywhere would have been happy to work with with the partner, the female partner that I was talking about, just because she was so good, I'm sure she could literally handpick her clients. The the person who was affected by that was the assistant to one of the brokers. And oh, so even though she was qualified to do her job really well, she was not one of the you know she was she wasn't the person the one at the top of the heap that you know they felt like oh well yeah she's good but i don't know if you're good enough right uh-huh right okay yeah. so it was a, it was a, she didn't have the title so she didn't have the title she didn't have the wins she hadn't you know she was she was an assistant she was not a partner yeah mm -hmm. um so as to why am I excited about this book? Okay, so I have, throughout my life, I have made um, so many amazing connections, right? When I have met people that I have, um, I have had a chance to start getting to know better and better and see who they are as human beings. And when I met you, and when I met Vicky, and you're just two people who stand out to me the values that you know you embody and the way you know i have experienced you as um as a human being as a as an entrepreneur as somebody who teaches with all their heart how you show up you guys were like are two of the people that i'm like okay these people are my people whatever you're doing i am there to support you so that's the main reason why this caught my attention because whatever you were doing i knew it was going to be something that was worth sharing with others so that was the foundation of it and then when i got the book and i heard before even i got the book when I heard you sharing, you know, why you were writing this book and what was the, the premise behind it? What was your heart behind it? How can you not be on board? Um, and then I got the book. I was so excited. I literally started flipping through it. So just even what I was reading, I was thinking, this is where, I mean, frankly, for me, it's, mind-boggling that in today's day and age like flip today's day and age like even in the past why is it that we get hung up on how much you know what the ability of somebody is based on gender it, it there is no reason right there's just it doesn't make any sense um but here are two women who i know have carved their place in the world despite whatever came you know across their path and now you are wanting to bring this ability and confidence to more women right for me it's not just about women it's about people in general like i i know guys who have who lack the confidence too because of the way you know certain experiences have crossed their path but all of it to me is if you're empowering other amazing humans to do what they need to do to live their best life i'm on board i'm there with you so that was why i was interested in it well thank you so so much amber like i said at the beginning i'm really <laughs> pleased and and grateful for the support that you have given not only to excuse me to Vicky and I through this launch but you know always with the things that uh you know anything that we bring out you're always a, a great cheerleader and a supporter for us so thank you very very much and the feeling is mutual and it's likewise so the other thing that um that I wanted to share in this because something that has that has come up and, and you alluded to this when you were talking about our reason or our heart as to why we would why did we decide that we would do this the funny thing is that as much as we as women you know we want to link arms and rise together unfortunately there is still in our society that she myth often women also contribute to that you know so there's still an element of women who don't always lift their sisters up who are not always there to support one another and so a big part of what we what the movement that we are creating is that we as women we are 
looking at one another as as if you were at my sister what would I do for you I would go to the mat for you I would do whatever I could to help you so it's about us being just good human beings doing the you know the right thing and helping one another I've got a question come up here it says just wondering Amber how did the experience at the brokerage at that brokerage firm feel you when you feel how did that um, experience make you feel when you were actually witnessing it? So even though it didn't actually happen to you, as a bystander seeing that go on and seeing your, you know, your friend having that experience, how did that actually make you feel? Uh, confused because I literally was the kid on the block, right? Everybody else, including the person, the woman that whose story I shared. Um, like these are all my seniors, right? They are accomplished, they've already graduated, they're, this is her job, right? And I'm literally the kid from school first year. So for me, it was like this opening up of this world and confusion, like, but that doesn't make sense, right? Because why, like, how, yeah, it was just mind bog boggling. Yeah, and, and the interesting thing is often when we are that innocent bystander, we're seeing those things go on. Um, and maybe this wasn't the case, you know, for you because of, you know, the, the personality that you have is to go, oh, well, okay, that doesn't seem right. Um, and it didn't you didn't really take it on board to affect you. But for a lot of others, perhaps that would have been, okay, well, I've witnessed that. That has actually happened. It could have two outcomes, you know, one being that happens. So I don't want to get to that level because that sort of thing happens to me. Or on the flip side of that is I've got to work my little backside off as, you know, as hard as I can to get as many accolades and accreditations and, um, and you know, certificates as I possibly can because it's then that I am worthy and it's then that I am capable of actually giving this level of advice. So it's interesting that, um, you know, that that's actually what can happen as, a, as an innocent bystander. And often we don't think about it from that perspective. Oh, my gosh, that is so true. And I, I do believe that even though I didn't think like I even now when you were talking, I'm like, yeah, I was confused. But one of the things that popped up later on in my career um, was I found out that I had the seniority, I had the client portfolio, I had the wins. And somebody, one of my friends actually, who got promoted into a similar role, I found out that he was offered a higher salary, right? And I, my first reaction was I was super happy for him. But then I was like, wait, after I, right after I hugged him, like, oh, that's awesome. I was like, wait, and we are friends. So supposedly we're not supposed to discuss salaries, right? But we are friends. So he's telling me he knows exactly what I'm making. And I'm like, wait, how did you get higher than me? And he started laughing. And he's like, um, I don't know, I guess you'll have to ask him. And that was, you know, our senior um, executive who, uh, who he was referring to. And I remember thinking, okay, I have this, 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 and this, you know, many um, certifications and higher degrees. What else do I need to do in order to qualify for that? Not thinking mm -hmm. This is not, and I'm thinking, but you don't have all of this yet, right? Um, yeah. So here is my friend and I comparing to say, oh, how can I go get that? Because I'm up for that, but you already got it. So what do I need to do, right? So just the... And what, yeah, and what's fascinating about all of this is that that's actually the she myth at play, right? And without you even realizing that that is the she myth kind of sideswiping you because yeah. it's like, well, you, he got the job. If, so when you look at the statistical data, the data tells us that exactly the story that you've just said, as a female, I'll work harder, I'll go and get the degree, I'll, you know, I'll work harder. We've got, in, in most cases, we've got more degrees, we're more qualified than our male counterparts. Yet, when you apply for a position and you are set side by side, the male will often out um, will will outwin the female uh, 
I'm going to use a figure here, and I don't know this to be exact, but I would say it'd be something like, you know, three to one, be because of the fact that they're a male, and there's a whole lot of other, and underneath the current of that she myth, there's a whole lot of other stuff going on. She's a female, she's probably going to get married, she'll get pregnant, she won't be at work, she'll have to go away and have to look after the kids. So there's all of this, this stuff that happens under the surface, it's like that great big, um, you know, iceberg, we only see the top of the, the tip of the iceberg, which is, hang on a minute so um the outcome of that is the tip of the iceberg he got the job i didn't he gets paid more than i than i do you know than i do and then beneath all of that all of the the ocean with the iceberg is all the underlying current that is all of those she myths running running rampant that are actually starting to sabotage your success without necess without you necessarily even realizing or, or understanding that that's what's going on and it's quite fascinating when you start to look at it like that and like as i've dug a little bit deeper you're like oh my god that did happen it and did. That's the, <laughs> well, that, right so that's the, that's the she myth um happening uh, happening in your life without you necessarily even knowing it, even though you are a very outgoing, positive, you know, forward thinking woman, it still happens today. So the book is really to, going to help. Like if I, we get this book into as many young women's hands as possible, you would have identified at that time, that's a she myth. Okay, now what am I going to do about that? Now, because to, to make changes with with these she myths and the things that are actually going on that are not right, it's getting the individual woman to understand that this is a she myth. It's not me. It's a she myth at play. But now, what am I going to do about that? How do I navigate my way? And it's not about making because um, this is the other piece that happens. We start to make allowances for it, or we workarounds for things that are actually happening. Happening. So it's then being able to, to look at that head on and say, well, that's happening. That's not right. I'm going to do something about it instead of making the workaround. And the workaround was, OK, well, if that happened, Amber's mind then immediately went to the workaround as if I want to get the better job, I need to go and get another qualification. I have to be better qualified, not equally qualified, but better qualified than my male, my male counterpart to actually get the job. Interesting. So thank you so much for sharing that uh, piece of uh, information. And thank you for that person who actually asked that question, because that wouldn't have come up uh, had uh, that question not been asked. So today I want to say thank you so much for sharing all of your knowledge. And, you know, you're a, you're a really um, amazing person to be around. Your energy and your just what you do is infectious, your positivity. So I, I love the fact that you do uh, that. I love that about you, Amber, and I'm wishing you all the best with your brand new, uh, with your brand new, you know, business or the 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 um the pivot that you've made with your business. And a, a little birdie told me that you might actually have your own show coming out very very soon. So <laughs> uh, I will make sure that we share uh, that with um with the rest of our viewers at some stage when you're ready to to go live with that and share all of your holistic growth strategies with everybody. So thank you so much for being here today. Guys, if you haven't got yourself a copy of the She Myth book, then I would recommend you head on over to one of these places down below, amazon.com if you are in the States or elsewhere. And if you're in, here in Australia or in New Zealand, go to amazon.com.au. Both the paperback and the uh, ebook versions are available now. And we will soon have a a audio version coming out in the next next month or so so uh we'll make sure that we let you guys know when the audio version is coming out because we've had loads and loads of requests for that uh, we are not far away so we will keep you posted with that i will be back again tomorrow with another she myth eliminator story another amazing woman telling her stories of where she myths have been present in her life and how she's actually overcome them so thanks again for being here amber thanks everybody for being here today and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys all again tomorrow. Bye for now.